Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Angel of the Night Radio. This is Lord Rick, your host, live from Carson City. And today we're going to be bringing you some Jack the Ripper London Broil. And I was telling you guys about this when we did the uh, Leviathan Pork. I said to you guys this could be a double feature, a cooking episode where I would give you two good eats, two good meals that you can make during the quarantine because obviously London broils fairly affordable and so is pork right now. Unless more meat plants start to shut down and so forth, but here locally a lot of the meat, you know, Nevada's a, kind of a meat state. A lot of cattle, a lot of, a lot of hogs, a lot of pork. So we don't have any meat shortages, so meat's relatively staying the same price during the COVID-19 crisis. And so I want to give you guys some good eats because, I mean, most of you, most of my friends are stuck home. They're like, I don't know what to do. Well, now's the time to brush up on your cooking. you got nothing but time. You're home with your kids. You can get your kids involved. You can have your kids make this meal with you. And, and it's something you can do together. So... Today I'm going to give you some London, some Jack the Ripper London Broil. You'll find out why it's called Jack the Ripper London Broil. I'm not going to tell you why, but you'll find out in a couple hours as this slow cooks. Right now what we have, we have the crock pot, obviously. We're going to plug it in. Different crock pots, different temperatures, all right? This is a me mediocre crock pot. My silver crock pot on high cooks very fast. This one on high takes a long, much longer, probably an extra hour or two to cook. So what I'll probably do is keep it on high for three hours, low on three hours. That way we can, we can cook it on high so it starts sizzling, absorbing the flavor, and then we'll slow, we'll simmer it very slow. Now you guys know London broil very basic type of meat, okay? I don't know if you guys can see this or not. This one's a couple pounds. I don't need a huge London broil. I used to, many years ago, when my kids were little, I used to buy London broils. What I'd do is I'd season it all, wrap it in foil, put it in the broiler, and broil it, you know, and take maybe a half hour, 45 minutes, whatever the case is. But when you cut the slices of meat, if you didn't cut them thin, it was a little tough. So then recently I was like, what could I do to make the meat more tender, more flavorful throughout? So I started cooking London, different London broil. I started doing different recipes in the crock pot. And I'm going to give you one of these recipes today because honestly, I mean, once you cook London broil in the crock pot, you're not going to want London broil any other way. And I know a lot of people are like, I'll throw it on the grill, I'll throw it in the broiler. Yeah, but it's a little tough. It doesn't have as good a flavor as if you were, per se, to throw it in the crock pot. Okay? And before we go on with the show, I hope everybody's okay and well and helping one another and being good to one another because, I mean, people really are dying. I mean, you have celebrities dying, politicians, brothers and sisters dying. I got friends that have lost two, three people to the COVID-19. Cats are getting sick. People are getting sick everywhere. It's, it's, it's a horrid disease. And we don't know how long any of us are going to be here. I could get in my truck today, die, flip my truck, die in an accident. I could get cancer tomorrow and have six months to live. None of us know how long we're going to be here, and as long as we're here, don't you agree that we should eat good? And living life is about good eats. It's not just about working all the time and being serious, and, and some people, they drink, they do drugs and stuff, but I'm all about eating healthy. That's my drug. Food is my drug. But eating good food, I'm not going to shove a bunch of donuts in my face. I mean, if you guys look at me, I'm about 189 pounds right now. I'm healthier than ever. All because of meals like this. So we want to, I mean, when we sit here and we do these shows for you guys, we want you to be eating healthier. We want to make you healthier. That's why we do the cooking shows. I mean, I just kind of wanted to clarify that before I get more deep into cooking this London broil. Now, this is going to be a very, this is going to be a much more simple meal than the Leviathan pork that I made the other day. 
It's going to be a much more simpler type of meal. Yeah, it's going to be made with a lot of TLC and love, but keep in mind that you have two different types of meals. You know, you have shredded pulled pork and a flavorful barbecue sauce that I made, and today this is going to be more of a garlic type of sauce I'm making, but it, the difference is that it is beef. It is not pork, and pork cooks a lot quicker than if you are to make a roast. And what we're going to probably do, what I'm probably going to do is cook this London broil that you see here. Um, Probably going to make some vegetables to go with it, maybe a rice. I, I'm not sure about sides, and I'm going to have to sit down the next few hours. I'm going to have to try to think of what do I want to add? Do I want to add vegetables like it's a roast, or do I want to cook the vegetables on the side? There's so many different things that we can do today, so many different elements to this. But the main course is Jack the Ripper London Broil. And so what we're going to do, we're going to start off, I'm going to show you guys real quick, pay attention now. Okay. Now, I'm not saying you have to get the same exact products. This is private select, private selection. I don't know if you guys got private selection, but some of the some of the products they put out are just amazing. A little more expensive, but sometimes I get a coupon or at the store they'll have buy two get one free that type of thing. So you know you can go with this. But do you guys know what this is? It's a black garlic kalbi. It's Korean. Any type of black garlic or garlic marinade will work for this, okay? I'm not saying you have to use this type of marinade. What I'm saying is find yourself a garlic marinade, okay? I got an extra, I got two of these, okay? And I got one of these. This is just Kroger, but they also have um, a couple brand names of urban garlic marinade, okay? Any kind of herb and garlic marinade. In this case, you go to the Asian section, you can get black garlic kalbi. And that's what this is. It's black garlic kalbi Korean London broil. Sounds a little long and a little weird, right? And what we're going to do is... We're just going to pour both of these in here, okay? We want to use both. Because if you use one, it's not going to really submerge the meat. And you really want to have the meat cooked throughout evenly. And you want to be able to submerge the meat. So, I'm going to put two of these in here. Alright. Just two. And I'm going to take the London broil. You see it here? And I'm going to lay it on top. It's already, done, it's already getting soaked across, okay? For now, what we're going to do... This is Jack the Ripper London Broil, correct? Ah! Uh, I don't care what sound you make, but I'm telling you right now, you just got to pretend. In order to get this tasting good, you got to be Jack the Ripper, okay? So Jack the Ripper London Broil. So you take your knife like this and you go, ah! Like you're murdering the goddamn thing. Ah! Stab the shit out of it. That's how we do things here in Lord of Rick's Kitchen. But anyways, you get the point. You stab it full of holes, and you allow this beautiful black garlic marinade to seep on it. Okay, because here's the thing. I don't have to stab it, but if you stab it throughout... It will allow the marinade to seep in and cook even longer. Because if you don't stab it, what's going to happen is you'll cook, you'll get the outside all flavorful, but the inside will not cook throughout the meat. And of course, once you shred it and all that good stuff, yeah, it'll start to absorb some of the flavoring, but why not do it hours ahead of time and even make a more flavorful Jack the Ripper London broil. Now you guys know, it's a 420 friendly show. So I'm going to smoke my bud, I'm going to drink my hazelnut coffee, and I'm going to take my time teaching you guys how to make this beauty of a dish. Oh, man. If you're going to be in the kitchen, you might as well have fun, you know? Smoke a little bud, drink a little coffee, 
If you want, listen to music. I'd put on music, but it'd be a total disruptor of the show. Because then you guys wouldn't hear me talk. You wouldn't know what the fuck's going on. You know, you just hear heavy metal music playing. And it wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to tell you guys how to make this. So let's get on. Next step you're going to do is Worcester sauce. I just put a little bit, just a few sprinkles on in there, all right? No big deal. You don't have to use it, or you can use it. The Worcester sauce has a salty flavor to it. It'll, it's Worcester sauce and London broil go great together, so why not? Why not slow cook it into the meat, right? Okay. Take some herb and garlic, okay? I told you guys what this is. There's thyme, oregano, basil, rosemary, sage, majorum. Little herbs never hurts. Believe it or not, herbs can fight cancer. So I use herbs in everything, you know? And I, and I have to say that I'm a really healthy guy. I have a lot of physical ailments and those kind of things, but when it comes to my immune system, I don't mess around. You know, I have a really good immune system. I don't like to be sick for months on end, weeks on end. I don't even like the idea of getting COVID-19. I'm trying to stay away from it, but I'm not paranoid. My work is essential, so if I get sick, I get sick. It is what it is. However, eating right can also help with the COVID-19 and fighting it. And I know people are saying, ah, oh, there's no cure, but it's not true. Yeah, there's no cure, but if you eat right, your symptoms will probably be a little less severe because if you can feed yourself, you can also fight a virus. But you gotta have the will to get up off the bed, out of your bed and eat, right? So if you're home with the COVID-19, I seriously suggest you make this meal. And, it, and there's gonna be more to this meal than just a slab of meat. Anyhow, what I'm putting in is garlic powder. You can put a lot in. This is a Korean garlic type of, of lemon broil, so obviously you're going to put some garlic in there for flavoring, okay? I use crushed red pepper. I really don't like black pepper. What happens with black pepper is you pour it out and it may get too spicy because it's so fine like dust, but at least with the red pepper, you can see how much you're putting in. I just put a tiny bit in for spice, spiciness, a little bit of spiciness, not too much. Garlic salt, instead of, you can use regular salt, but this is garlic flavored salt, so it just adds to the garlic, just a tad bit in there. I'm not really one of these sticklers about measuring, because here's the thing about measuring, okay? If you've been cooking for years, you don't need to measure. When it says a dash of this, a dash of that, you can kind of judge yourself, okay? Unless you're like me, I mean, I can measure with my fist. Tammy thinks it's funny, she's sitting here watching the radio show the other day, and she's like, I never seen anybody measure with their fist before. I was taking fist, you know, throwing it in. But it was some of the best pork I've ever eaten in my life. You know, I have every I have hundreds of recipes up in my head, and I remember every one of them, so I don't really need to measure. So when I teach you guys, it's your choice. You want to measure shit out, measure it out. It just takes longer. If you want to turn around and you just want to do what you're meant to be doing, which is cooking and eating the food, then cook and eat the food. Let's not get all scientific here. Let's just use your better judgment. You can see the red pepper. It's just a dash. It's not going to be too spicy. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Some more garlic powder he threw in. Onion powder. I use onion powder on all my meats. Onion powder is good. Again, like I told you in the last episode, if you give your animals leftovers and you put onion powder, Onions aren't the best thing for your animals. My dogs, it agrees with them. It's not an issue. But some breeds of dogs. So, you know, decide. This is a meal that's good for the whole family, dogs included. And the reason why I say dogs is I know dog food's getting hard to come by with the COVID-19. And some of you may have to feed your dog steak and, and uh, pork and, and leftover vegetables and things like that. But anyway, I put enough onion powder to cover the meat. Montreal steak okay this is Chicago steak I'm gonna put a little bit of both because this is a London broil and there are spices in here that I did not put in that are found in here which I could use or take advantage of I'll tell you what's in the Montreal steak salt spices black pepper red pepper which I already put in garlic onion and sunflower oil natural flavor some paprika so 
you know, just a little bit because there's already pepper in, in, in it. Just a tiny bit. Just for flavoring. Just, and you don't have to. You can put any type of steak seasoning in. You can buy generic steak seasoning and put it in. But you want a flavorful lemon broil, and you, and you get that from the marinades and the sauces, like the black garlic sauce. However, all this does is enhance the recipe. So I, I use a lot of herbs and spices. Now we go on the Chicago steak. Bell peppers, red peppers, spices, garlic, and salt. Basically the same types of spices I just put in, but just a little bit, just a little bit. And in the final additive to this, there's a couple, well, I got two. I got a little sea salt, just a tiny bit of sea salt, just a tad, okay? And of course, we have garlic right here. And nothing is better than real garlic because as you can see you could put all you could put spices, you can put marinades, sauces, that type of thing. But real garlic mixed in with the London broil, I mean it's just gonna make it so much more flavorful and healthy. And I and I am a huge garlic user. So I'm gonna put myself three heaping tablespoons of this. Heaping. Notice I say heaping because it's there because this is when I heat there's three tablespoons so I just put nine tablespoons of garlic in this. And you can decide if you don't want a lot of garlic because you're worried that your girlfriend's not gonna give it up later at night after dinner then don't put a lot of garlic. I know my girlfriend she don't like a lot of garlic in my mouth. She's like, you ain't getting me in a skirt and heels tonight. You ain't getting me in lingerie. Your mouth smells like garlic. And no matter how much you brush it, you just can't get rid of the garlic. You know what I'm saying? So here's the secret. You give your girlfriend or your wife a lot of garlic. You eat a lot of garlic. That way when she says, hell no, bitch. I ain't giving you no booty tonight. You could say, your breath smells like garlic. She'd be like, so do yours. Problem solved. Your, both your breath smells like garlic. What's the difference? Now, you, I mean, here, here's the thing, folks. For me, I've always, my grandmother was Italian, you know. Everybody came off the island of Sicily and Italy from my family. Most of my family, not all. I mean, I'm German and Polish and Italian, but mainly Italian. And I came over, Ellis Island came off the boat, you know, to start new lives here in America. And, and my grandma's family, their whole family, cooks with a lot of garlic. Everything's garlic, garlic. But my grandma would pick cloves out of the garden, cut the cloves up, fry them up in some oil maybe, and throw them in whatever. Throw, she'd be cooking something, throw the garlic in, throw the garlic in. And they're finding out, based on studies, that garlic fights so many different things. It boosts your immune system, it fights cancer. So there's a lot of good things. Plus it's full of flavor, it's good for you. And if you have some time, you do what I do, okay? Because you guys know, during most episodes, I always take a spoonful of garlic myself. Not that I'm not going to have enough garlic for dinner tonight, but I have a little garlic now. Mmm. Mmm. This is living. You know that? And you do what I do. If you don't feel like walking back and forth to the sink, you can play what I call sink basketball. Don't do it with your cups and your glassware, but you got spoons and different metal pieces. You just, whoo, just toss them. Save you a trip walking back and forth. But if you're like me, who likes to walk back and forth because you're trying to maintain your weight, because this is a meal that you'll maintain a healthy weight with. You're not going to gain a lot of weight eating vegetables and meat, okay? People are like, Rick, Rick, what'd you do? Lord Rick, what'd you do? Lord Rick, what'd you do? You look different. You look like you lost weight. Well, I'm not shoving donuts in my mouth. I'm eating a lot of meats and vegetables. Chicken, beef, vegetables, little rice. Not helping myself to three platters of, you know. I used, back in the day, I'd go up for thirds, even fourths. I'd have a three-course meal and go up for fourths. Now, as I get older, I don't eat as much. Usually one plate of food's good enough for me. So, 
we don't want to, I, I, I'm not an overeater. I mean, I used to, honestly, I used to eat a lot of junk food. Chips, soda, every day, chips, soda, ho-hos, this, that, I had a whole set list. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, then, in, then a bigger snack at night, and then maybe in the middle of the night a snack. I was getting up there 250, 260. And in the last few months, I got down to about 189, 180. It, it fluctuates from 188 to about 192, my weight. And it stays that way, and people don't understand. Like, how could you have such a big meal tonight and not gain any weight? Well, it's simple. I can skip breakfast and lunch and have a good meal. I can eat breakfast and have dinner and just skip lunch. And I'm going to maintain my weight. With the exception that I'm not over drink, you know, I'm not drinking soda. I'm not eating baked goods such as, you know, muffins and ho-hos and Twinkies and donuts and, you know, sugary sweets. You stay away from that stuff. And if you decide that you want to be more healthy, you eat a good meal like this. Now, it's going to be hard to see. So that's what's going to look like. I haven't mixed anything, but you'll see once I mix it, you'll start to see the blend. And I'm going to mix it right here on camera to show you guys. I'm going to flip it over. Okay. It's big, you know. It's a, it's a couple pounds. But I flipped it over. And now I'm going to stir it. Because obviously if you have clumps of seasoning, that's not going to do any good. It's not going to seep into the meat. So I'm going to stir it. And I don't care how you stir it, which way you stir it. But you flip it over to get it started. That way everything's on the bottom and mixed in the sauce. Okay. So everything's mixed good. You guys can see the seasoning throughout. You make sure when you put the lid on, see now it's completely submerged. But you make sure when you put the lid on, you try to keep the lid on as much as possible. And I'll tell you why. Because you don't want the juices to evaporate, okay? Because, as you can see, the meat's barely covered. I don't want to use a third black garlic, because then you're starting to get into expenses, correct? And so we don't want to let out a lot of the juices. We don't want it to evaporate, because this is going to be cooking. I'm going to give you an idea. I'm going to cook this on high for three and low for three, and we'll see if it's ready. Which would put me having dinner kind of early tonight. Usually some nights I eat eight o'clock. You're not supposed to eat too late. But tonight, maybe, maybe we'll eat 5 or 6 o'clock instead of eating at 7, 7.30, 8, 8.30. So we eat a little bit earlier. But it is morning, and I am starting this in the morning. I woke up. I was all excited. I'm like, I'm going to start that Jack the Ripper linen broil, and by 5, 6 o'clock, I can sit down and have a nice meal, watch a movie. I, I, I am a Prime Video subscriber, and I have, like, dozens and dozens of horror movies that I watch. This movie called Clown Town last night. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. You want to see a good movie? Watch Monster Party. It's about these kids. They go over to this house to rob it, and it turns out that all the people at that house, there's a dinner party. They're all serial killers there. And it's a gory film, but it's, I mean, it's fucking crazy, dude. I mean, there's chainsaws in it, and body parts, and, you know, if you like hack and slash and gore type of films. So what I like to do is sit down and have a nice meal with my family, you know, sit around the table and talk. Sometimes I like to have a nice meal and watch my big screen TV. It's something I've done for a few years now and I kind of enjoy that angle also. So you got the recipe. It's not going to be done. We have more work to do. Today I'm also hosting a radio show, How to Clean My 12 Gauge Mossberg Shotgun. And so we're going to get ready to start that show. So I'll kind of have two shows going on at once today. And so you kind of get, you guys are really getting a lot of Angel and I radio. And it's by request. I get a lot of requests for people who are like, why don't you host your show anymore? Why don't you host more cooking shows? Why don't you host a radio show? 
And so I am trying to do that more often for you guys, where you guys have something you can utilize and use or enjoy, especially during this these the quarantine and this COVID-19 epidemic. We really we really need outlets, whether it's cooking, jogging, camping. Um, and speaking of camping, in the near future, I, I, I've been going out to central Nevada, up in the Shoshone Mountains, Gillis Mountain Range, out by Gabs. Gabs has one of the oldest mines in Nevada. It's an old, wild, western town. But right in the middle, you got Gabs, and you got about ten different mountain ranges and, and peaks around it. It's in the middle of Nevada. There's canyons everywhere. Some of the peaks, you go higher up, there's forest, beautiful forest. Below is high desert. And so Tammy and I, in the last month, we've been to about, I was telling you, 16, 17 places. Actually, we'll be hitting 17, 18, 19 in a few days because we're going to be going back out to the same area. And what we do is we, we'll do three, four ghost towns and mines, and then we'll find an area to camp that overlooks an expanse or within a ghost town or up in the high mountains of Nevada, the higher altitude areas where there's forest. So we got a nice trip planned because we're going to be doing this massive mill, an old stage stop, two or three mining camps all a couple miles apart. And then across the highway, if you go out in this other mountain range, we have a, another mining camp, the same mining camp of Poinsettia, the owner who built it up and owned that, also owned the Kaiser Mining Camp. So we're going to go to the Kaiser Mining Camp, then we got a, a mill and a few other little mining camps and ghost towns all near this area. And then we got, if we have time, the next day after camping, we'll wake up in the morning and hit two, three more ghost towns. So on this upcoming tri trip, we could end up hitting six to seven more locations. And so, you know, I want people to know I'm still, despite the COVID and the quarantine, I'm still one of the urban exploration and paranormal groups that's still going out and doing it up. Nobody in this state, even out here out west, has done as many mines and explorations as I have. I mean, there's a few, there's a few, but it's limited. There's probably about five or six people, maybe ten at most, who religiously do these, these wild western heritage sites, and we're one of the groups. And... So it's all the more reason to, you know, get my own television show someday. But the networks don't ever want to work with me because a lot of them are very prejudiced about how I look, how I dress, how I speak. And it's a damn shame because, you know, you'll watch the History Channel and you see a bunch of hillbillies with no teeth. And they just act stupid, scared, and it's all skidded. And it's a train wreck. Unfortunately, you know, I don't want to put out train wreck work. I want to put out the best work. I want you guys to get something out of the work we do. Whether you learn history, see these places, or you can take your family and enjoy them the same way I did. So the last month of April and the end of March has been a heavily wild western series of journeys that we have done. Ranging from forest above Nevada to high deserts to mines that go for miles to mining camps, mills, ghost towns caves, cemeteries, we have done it all the last few weeks. You've just been hitting the road. We've been on the road a lot. Let's say you're going to hit the road, what better to make some Jack the Ripper London broil? And you know what? If you don't eat it all, you can pack it up for the road. And you can warm it in a little pot on a propane grill. Because this is, will taste even more awesome left over once it has a chance to sit in its sauces overnight. So it's a good meal before you take your journey out in the middle of nowhere. You're listening to Angel on Night Radio. We're live in Carson City, and this is Lord Rick. And so we're going to come back. We're going to let this cook for a few hours, and I'll come back. I'll stir it. I'll show you guys what it's starting to, what it's looking like. The meat's not going to be pink in another couple hours. It's, you know, it's going to start becoming extremely tender. It's a good meat if it's cooked in the crock pot. Because the difference is when you cook it on a grill or you cook it in the stove on broil, really the meat's not, it's a, it's a meat that doesn't absorb marinades very well. Unless you can cook it in a crock pot where it has six, seven hours to absorb the juices, the herbs, the flavor, and that kind of thing. So I'm going to close with that. Obviously I'm going to close with a little bit of toke toke. Smoke, smoke.
What can I say? I'm multi-talented. You know, the strangest thing happened to me the other day ago. I'm going to leave you guys with these thoughts before I come back. As you guys know, I, I'm trying to play the dating game right now. Joined a bunch of dating services, apps. Yeah, my girlfriend knows. I told her. Because I'm trying to have another kid. And my girlfriend's an older woman. And, and that's okay. She's a very sexy older woman. She really is. I mean, she dresses skirts and heels and stockings and straightens her hair. And she has real pretty eyes. She's just a pretty woman. But... You know, the chances of a woman in her late 40s having a child is just so astronomically impossible. You know, it's just like having chickens. They lay eggs the first few years a lot, and they start to slow down. The eggs do slow down, and I need right now in my life an egg I can fertilize because I want to have a couple more kids. So I've been doing the dating game. You know, I've gone on a few dates, met a few girls, you know, that kind of thing. Discussed it because I've come across women in their later 30s who really want a kid and don't see any hope of marriage or, or that kind of opportunity because it's not easy to meet people, quality people to have children with. You know, I've been a dad for over 20 years. My kids are doing right. They're on their own. They're doing good for themselves. Jobs, careers, wives, this, that. But but when you decide to conceive a kid, you know, a lot of times it's a single mom and the dad wants nothing to do with it. And I'm one of these dads that's totally involved in the lives of my kids, even now that they're adults, I'm still involved. And I always wanted a big family where I had my sons and my grandkids and their wives and more kids and running around and just big long Thanksgiving table. And I'm cutting the turkey, and I've got all my kids sitting around, and their wives and their kids. And, you know, it's just, it's always been a dream of mine because I came from a small family. I didn't have a lot growing up. Actually, I had a lot of trauma, and I was abused growing up heavily. Um, you know, it, I don't even want to get into it because it'll ruin this meal. But I would tell you something. I mean, I went on a date with this girl, you know, because I, I mean, you don't just have kids off the bat. You make friends, you develop relationships, friendships where there's some trust gained so that you know, hey, we're gonna, if we have a kid, we're messing around, a kid gets conceived, we can both be involved in that kid's life and both be co-parent, co right? Which is the mature, responsible thing to do. Well, it seems to me, since I've lived up in northern Nevada, I always end up meeting, like, like, I'll end up meeting a woman and it turns out that she has a tool between her legs. It's really not a woman. I'm like one of these guys that has all this bad luck. Constantly women are like, you're hot, you're attractive, Lord Rick. I get it on Facebook all the time. But if I'm so hot or attractive, why aren't those women with me? No, no, instead, all the, motherfucker cra all the motherfucking Craigslisters, because they've closed dating on Craigslist, have decided to go to phone apps. The same phone apps I use to meet other women because there is no other way to meet people here. And now with COVID-19, for sure, nobody's meeting nobody. Well, I ended up meeting this woman, you know. She had nice, she had nice tits. I mean, I was taken back. All her shots show her cleavage. I'm like, I'm like, boing, you know what I'm saying? You know how guys are. They think with their fucking dicks sometimes. I was thinking of my dicks. So I was thinking of my dick. I was thinking, man, I'm going to titty fuck the shit out of this girl. Got along fine. I mean, she told me she wanted to fucking ride me, and she, she told me she wanted to fucking have fun with me. But really, I'm not looking for a one-night stand. I'm not looking for sex. I'm not even, you know, I like a little bit of fun when I'm in the mood. But right now in my life, I'm at a point where I'm an older guy. I'm still young enough to have kids, and I want a couple more. And my girlfriend, I love seeing her interact with my kids. She's always been a good mom to my sons. I mean, they weren't her kids, but she stepped in and decided to be a mom to my kids because my ex-wife was not involved in my kids' lives. She was an abusive parent and just, I mean, drugs, drinking, partying. So when I met my girlfriend, she took over the mother role, and I enjoyed seeing my girlfriend with my kids. So I don't care who I have kids with, my girlfriend will always be considered the mom of my kids. My blood, my kids, my girlfriend, my girlfriend, their mom. Doesn't matter. Blood doesn't matter. Tammy is like family. You guys got to really thank Tammy because she helps out with so many different projects within the Paranormal Ghost Society. She's not my investigator. She doesn't operate the website. She's not the host of this show. But 
She does help me plan our Kate's files into the paranormal. She does she does help me with camera work, filming, photography, EVPs, gathering evidence. And she does help me with some investigations. Um, if there's sometimes I get injured, I can't drive, she can drive me out of a place. There's a lot of things she does, but she doesn't want the limelight. She doesn't want her picture taken. She doesn't want to be on camera. She doesn't want to be on a show. She doesn't want fame. She just kind of works in the background. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, you know, I just want to thank her for all the nice things she's done for our paranormal organization over the years. All the things she's bought for the group and, and, and helping me out with projects. Because, I mean, you know, we just did, we did nearly 20 places. And I am so behind on my site because how do you add 20 places on your site when you have 20, you know, you have over 20 hours of film, thousands of pictures, more research and history to do. So it's very slow. I can only add a place once every couple of weeks. So if I do 20 places, that's six months of work yeah, ahead of me on my website. And I just want you guys to know what goes into it. But anyhow, going back to the titty fucking girl. I find out that this girl is just all bragging about how she used to use Craigslist. I'm like, oh boy, you know, but she's got a nice rep. So, you know, we, we really can't do anything. Can't go to a restaurant. I mean, what do you do in the COVID-19? No restaurants are open. The only thing you can, if you want to go out to eat, it's going to be a fucking card date. And that can be awkward the first time. Not to say I'm a saint. You know, there's been times where I've, picked up a girl in my truck, and next you know, 10 minutes later, I'm in the back of my truck, mm, 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 mm. you know, it just happens. It just happens. It may not happen to you, but it's happened to me. Probably too many times, you know what I'm saying? But anyways, going back, you know, I told the girl, I'm like, we can't sit in a cop cafe, so let's get our coffee. You know, we can go park up on the hill in the woods overlooking the town, sit in the truck. Well, I'm sitting in my truck, you know, we're drinking coffee, we're listening to some metal music, just chilling out, looking at the scenery, there's wildlife, all nature's coming out here in this valley and around Carson City and the woods, just a lot of mixed trees blooming, flowers, it's just beautiful here, man. It's paradise in this here part of the world. I mean, I live right near Lake Tahoe. I got lakes, I got woods, I got deserts. I got so much around me within an hour. It's fucking insane. Sitting there drinking our coffee, right? And just drinking coffee and shit. And, you know, it starts getting heated. She start, we start talking about sex. Sex is just an interesting topic. I, and I know there's a lot of women that say, uh, not looking for a hookup not looking for a one night stand, looking for something serious, I'm not going to talk about sex, no dick pics, blah, 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 blah. Most women say that. I mean, this woman's all telling me, I'm not into hookups. I am definitely, you know, looking for either a, a, a friend or a relationship. And, I mean, this woman, you know, seemed like she was all okay for maybe conception with. But we did in a heated sexual discussion. And I'm like, what are some of your fantasies? You know, we'll talk about fantasies, whatever. This is a common thing. Even with married couples, you will have sexual conversation. Talking about sex, you know, and she's all like, oh, I love titty fucking. I'm thinking, mm, mm, mm. And I go on the back of the truck, titty fucking, you know. But um, she goes, you know what else I also like? And I'm in the middle of drinking my coffee, and she says, I like fucking dogs. Fucking dogs! And she's like, I seen your dog and he's cute. And I'm like, hell no, bitch. I'm sipping the coffee, right? Coffee just... Mm, lid comes off. I got coffee on my goddamn fucking gonads. It's bad enough. My puppy stepped on my gonads the day before. So they already were fucking sore. I already had blue balls going on. And then I'm sitting there in the truck and we're talking about sex for an hour and my gonads are getting hard and she's all like, I like titty fucking. And then all of a sudden she goes, I like fucking dogs. And I burnt my gonads. So my gonads, my gonads got burnt. Then I had serious blue balls from not getting any fucking putang. And then my dog stepped on my goddamn balls. And this all happened within a 24 hour period. So now I don't even know if I can have any kids. And, of course, obviously, once she told me that she finds my dog 
cuter than I am, the date was off. I'm like, ouch! Ouch! That's exactly what I did. I was like, ouch! Ouch! What else am I supposed to do? I'm screaming out because my balls are fucking sizzling, and you got this woman who's telling me that she likes to have sex with fucking animals. You think Craigslist is gone? I sure the hell don't. It just moved, baby. It just moved to another part of the fucking web. Welcome to my world. This is Lord Rick. And you're listening to Angel on that radio. We're live in Carson City in Lake Tahoe. Bringing you good eats. With Lord Rick. And one more thing. Before we come back in a little bit, I'm going to give it one more stirring. Now that it's sizzling, I start. I see the... Um, I see the garlic sauce I made sizzling now, so I'm going to give it a stir, I'm going to flip it, and I'm going to let it sit for about an hour or two. You, you don't want to stir it too often at first, just let it simmer. So I'd say every hour, once or twice, just flip it, you know, and, and every hour, for even if it's, if you got, cook this for six hours, flip it 12 times. And, um... It may not be necessary by the fourth hour. It depends on how tender the meat is because you won't be able to flip it if it's super tender. It'll just pull apart. But we're going to give it one more stir. It's a tough slab of meat to, to you know, this spoon, I mean, this spoon doesn't really do the job, but it's just to stir the sauce. And we'll definitely use something else later, later on to serve it. However, when I lit, one thing I noticed when I, when I had picked up the meat, you could see it already was, the London broil was getting stretched and tender sitting in here, and you could start seeing cracks throughout it. So this is a, this London broil has hardly any fat, which is why it's such a good meat to buy at the store, because a lot of times you guys spend eight, nine, 10, 15, 20 dollars on a few steaks, right? And you, you take the steaks home, you cook the steaks, and find out that half of the steak is gristle and hard fat and bone, correct? And you get maybe this much meat. But with a London broil, now that it's been relaxed and cooking, it is as long as my crock pot from both sides. And you know what? It's all meat, no fat. But you can see when I flipped it, cracks throughout the top. And that's good because within those cracks... The black garlic kalbi will be absorbed. So I think with this radio show what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach some images and kind of kind of show you guys some of the projects we've been working on. Uh, went to Washoe Lake. I was telling you guys that about Washoe Lake. And uh, I took the dogs there and just, and sometimes I like to add photos to my videos just to kind of inspire our viewers a little bit, kind of show you a little bit of what life is like in the mountains and what my world is like, which is full of good times, good eats, family, friends, exploring, hiking, fresh air, nature. Life in the mountains has been the most amazing thing. And when I grew up in Buffalo, New York as a kid, I never thought I'd be making Jack the Ripper London broil and climbing goddamn cliffs of the Sierras chasing Sasquatch. Never thought in a million years. And again, I never thought in a million years the bearded lady would show up for a date with nice fucking titties but a fucking beard and tell me that she literally likes it doggy style by the dogs, you know? I just don't understand that shit, man. I don't understand you know, it's like, what, are we living on the goddamn funny farm? A bunch of fucking inbreds? I mean, it, if you, I mean, that's the same thing as saying, Old McDonald owned a farm, and on his farm, he fucks some goats, and he fucks some pigs saying E-I-E-I-O. You know what I'm saying? I asked this girl, and I said, Ouch! I said, what farm you been living on? Because you've got to be inbred, man. What female has a beard. I didn't even see the beard because I wasn't like, you know, kissing this woman. But then she gets up in my face with her titties and stuff and I'm like, not only does this woman have a beard, okay, there's facial hair growing. I don't know from what, but I assume it's from fucking, it's from fucking animals. 
You know, you fuck the beast, you become the beast, right? Case closed. I'll see everybody in a bit as the meal progresses. This is Jack the Ripper, London Broil. Hey everybody, we're back for another segment of Angel of the Night Radio, Good Eats with Lord Rick. And this is going to be a quick segment because I told you guys I'd keep you posted on how the roast is doing. And how the Jack the Ripper London Broil is doing. Oh my god, the smell. Oh, I died of gum ahead. Anyhow, let me not get too excited or taken back or carried away, but the whole house smells beautiful right now. I mean, it's it smells, it kind of has a roast-like smell because you're using a lot of garlic and other seasonings mixed in or infused into the lemon broil so as it's cooking there's an aroma throughout the house per se. So I'm checking on it because I want to make sure that it's not overcooking, we're not losing too much. Sometimes when you cook something in a crock pot it can dry out because the meat absorbs it or some of it evaporates. When you're cooking on a crock pot you always want to make sure everything's cooked evenly and submerged. And I was talking about that. You know, my, I mean I did a radio show about submerged cleaning my gun. My shotgun's rusty. You want to put, we have to submerge it in this home remedy solution I have. I'll take off all the rust and then I'll put the gun back together. I'll paint it and all that same thing when it comes to your meat. You make sure they're, you keep an eye, you make sure that they're, because they're going to absorb some, it's going to absorb a lot of whatever you use, whether it's barbecue sauce, marinade, something made with vinegar and, and Worcester sauce and seasonings or something. There's so many different things you can, you can cook a, a London Royal in or a roast per se. I just give you guys a platform and then you can tweak it or do whatever you want, okay? The Jack the Ripper lemon broil is cooking. It's been about two hours. It's not bad, but it still has four more hours to go. The thing is, people, when they cook in a crock pot, they rush it. They're like, shit, man, it's been cooking a few hours, and I'm hungry, and I want to eat now, and it's fine. I mean, after a few hours, yeah, it would be cooked, but if you want it more tender and more flavorful, let it cook a few more hours. Be patient with whatever it is you're cooking. Crock pot cooking is an art and a lot a lot of people know it and one of those keys to one of those keys to being successful with crock pot cooking do you know what it is? It's patience. Something I don't fucking have. <laughs> I'm serious. I don't have no patience. I never have gone online when I've been on TV shows or ran my show and said to you, hey everybody, I'm perfect, because I'm not perfect. I make mistakes, even in cooking, and I learn by those mistakes, but this Jack the Ripper London Broil is not a mistake. If this absorbs a lot of the black garlic calvi, which it's a good sized London Broil, it's probably going to, I don't want it to dry out. Because once it dries out, you're, you don't want to eat meat that's all rough and, and, and dried out. You want a moist, tender type of cut. And so if I cut you guys a piece of this, you want it to melt in your mouth. You understand what I'm saying? So I've noticed it's still it's still retaining a lot of the kalbi. I may not have to use this herb and garlic marinade, which is very similar to the kalbi, but it's not black garlic. However, there is garlic and other herbs in it. So if I had to use this as, you know, to add in a little more to keep it submerged, I will. Because once it starts breaking apart, it's really going to absorb most of it, and you don't want the meat to dry out. And so the key to cook, like I was saying, the key is patience. Yeah, you want, you may want, I may want to cook this an extra two, three hours tonight. And, and, and I will suffer. I will not be able to eat for a few more hours. But I'll tell you what, when I pull this, when I pull, put this onto a plate with uh, some beautiful vegetables, it's going to be a healthy meal. It's going to be well worth waiting for because 
The real art is the final product that's going to come out of this crock pot in a few more hours. And so, yes, it is kind of an art. And I'm teaching you the art of crock pot cooking. And not just crock pot cooking, but you can tell people, you know what? I made that Jack the Ripper lemon broil. And people are going to look at you strange and be like, what? And they're not going to get it unless they watch our cooking show. Once they watch our cooking, once they watch our cooking show, they will understand. They will understand what Jack the Ripper London Royal looks like. All right, everybody, let me show you. Let me show you what this looks like two hours into the cooking procedure. I mean, I, ha I mean, as much as I like to horseplay and joke around with you guys, I'd like you guys to see the entire process. And so this is a double creature feature cook and show. You guys got the Leviathans, the Leviathan pork loin. And now you guys are getting Jack the Ripper London Broils. So you're getting the best of both worlds right now. You know what I mean? A little hack and slash and a little bit of monster fun in your cooking. And you can make this fun for the kids. And the reason why you nickname, why I nickname my dishes is so they're associated with me. So that way, you know, it's just not... Oh, just lo plain London broil. This is not plain London broil. You can't just put a London broil. It, this is not a typical London broil. This is this is something that's that's Korean. It's a little bit Korean, but it's also a little bit of uh, Italian, Italiano, and that kind of thing. So it's it's in a sense in a sense I create my own recipes and procedures when I cook, and you guys can develop your own as well. But to me, cooking's an art, and the final product will leave from the crock pot to the plate and that's where the real taste test begins because when the family sits down at the table and eats it you want them to be in awe like this is amazing I want more I want more because this is you know this is not some people say you know I don't like steak it's tough there's fat there's this there's that that's because they're not cooking in the crock pot I cook most of my meats now in a crock pot they're tender they don't hurt my teeth there's no I don't need to take a knife and start cutting, you know, I don't have to go through none of that shit. So if you can master the art of crock pot cooking, you can really put out some wonderful meats. And if it's a fatty meat, you can boil it all off, which is awesome because I don't like to eat fat, you know, and I don't like, when I'm having a roast or a steak, I want to make, you know, I don't want it all fatty. And when I go to a restaurant, I get more fat than I do steak. So. With this procedure here, I mean, this is a London broil. There's, hard, there's hardly any fat on it. It's, you know, it's just a nice slab of London broil, and we're cooking it like a roast. It's basically being cooked like a roast, and eventually it'll melt in your mouth. And you, I mean, you could, you could be toothless, and you could eat this. And I just say that because some of you are, you know, in the COVID-19, a lot of elderly people are staying home. That means they're not eating out as much, or at the cafeterias at work, or they're not bringing a sandwich. You know, because they're home, and um, this is definitely a good meal for your grandparents or the elderly. It's it's a soft, soft meat once it's once I get the final results, but that's going to take time and a lot of patience. We're only two, a little over two hours into it. We still got four, maybe five, six hours to go. But if we want, the more longer you leave it, the more tender and tasty it'll be. So. Leave it. Just leave it. You know what I'm saying? Just don't touch it. If you're really hungry, you can get a healthy snack prior to eating a couple hours prior. That way when dinner's ready and this goes on your plate, I mean, you're just going to eat it up. I mean, I can promise you. So let me show you what it looks like. It's still submerged. I mean, I have it on high and after another hour or so, I'll put it on low cook because if it starts to boil too much, you start to lose some of the kalbi. And then I'll have to add this because we don't want it to dry out right now. We want to cook it for many hours. But if all of a sudden you just got a slab of meat, and I mean, you'll, it, you may not burn it, but it'll become dehydrated and like shoe leather. We don't want shoe leather, okay? When I was a kid growing up, my mom and my grandmother weren't very good at it. They didn't make crock pot meals. They didn't really use a crock pot. Everything was done in the oven, steak, this, that. And, I mean, our Thanksgiving turkey was shoe leather, and you couldn't even chew, I mean, you, you couldn't even pull a piece of meat off. It was tough. They'd cook it for 12 hours in the oven. It was extremely dry, and I don't, my turkeys, my meats are very tender. They melt in your mouth, and if you guys were living here, you'd be well fed. 
You know what I'm saying? Because you would be eating wholesome, healthy meals. But since we don't live together and you guys are across the miles, I can give you my recipe. You can apply it. You can eat it. I assure you, you will love the final results. So let's take a look, shall we? It's a very dark colored marinade, but you can get creative too. If the meat seems like it's not too tender, add a little bit of, of vinegar in it. Now, I didn't put no vinegar because it's not, there already is in the cubby a little bit of vinegar, but you guys can see it's browning. It's far from being done, but we're gonna, all we're gonna do is turn it and mix it like this so we can get, but it's still submerged and when it starts to become tender, maybe break apart a little, all this will absorb into it. And I may add a nice California medley of vegetables, maybe even some potatoes in this. I haven't decided yet. Um, we have plenty of time to decide. This is going to have to stay on high another hour and another three, four hours on low. And then I'll show you guys the final results. With that being said, you're listening to Angel Thy Night Radio, and this is Good Eats with Lord Rick. And um, yeah, I want to thank you guys for watching our videos. I mean, sometimes people are like, wow, your videos are so long. Well... The only way I have to communicate with you guys across the world is through YouTube, through film. And, you know, I wish some of us were spent more time together. I wish that you were sitting at my dinner table eating such a meal. I wish that you were here so we could climb that mountain, go up to that ghost town, and chase Sasquatch tracks in the forest. You know, I, I, I wish for those things. Because, honestly, I'm just one soul all alone in the world. The only way I can connect sometimes with some of you is, is through my cooking. And I hope, I, I feel like all good things come from cooking. Not politics. Not these petty things in life. Nothing good comes of that. But you can join people together on, based on leadership, cooking, common interest. And right now our government's so divided and I think if they had some Jack the Ripper linen broil they might actually get something done and quit shorting the American people and get testing done for the coronavirus. Not 500,000 a day but a million, two million tests a day. So we can test all, as many people can come in. If you have it you stay home 14 days. If you don't you go back to work. But it's something, a better system to get the economy going. And I don't like to talk politics, but I believe when I can bring you guys such a wonderful dish, I can at least voice my opinion. I mean, that's part of being in America. You know, we have our Second Amendment or freedom of speech. Um, we have constitutional rights and amendments that give us the freedom of speech. And the one way we can exercise our freedom is by using our voice, our inner voice and our external voice. And I'm, what I mean is I'm speaking from the inside about how I feel, but I'm also putting it out there to you guys so you can pass this video to friends and, and they get something more than just cooking out of it. But we're uniting together to agree based on this wholesome meal and breaking some bread tonight. And I wish I could break bread with all of you across the miles. I wish I could share this meal. I wish you could taste it. I wish you could, could be here with me is what I really want to say. And, and with this COVID-19, we don't know if we're going to be here one day to the next. Here's the thing, I got a good immune system, but your own immune system can kill you if it, if it reacts to the virus and tries to get rid of it. It may be overstimulated and kill you. Or you'll be on a ventilator and eventually stop breathing, breathing due to pneumonia and fibrosis of the lungs, et cetera, et cetera. So we all, you know, we're all here a very short time, and why we're here, I always learned why we sit together. The most important things in life are the simple ones. Sitting down, having a nice meal, and being able to talk things over. And not enough families, not enough people talk things over. And, um, you know, these are strange times. These are hard times, obviously, with the, with the coronavirus going on and, and the pandemic. And, you know, a lot of us are home and we're starting to see things differently. Cooking a meal and sitting down with your family, maybe doing a project around the house, like me cleaning the rust off my shotgun, painting it, that kind of thing. And, and so people complain, I need to go back to work, blah, 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 blah. Be grateful for the time that you have to spend with the people that you love and that you're in good health 
and that some of you do have the ability, like me, to be able to cook, to be able to cook such a great meal tonight and sit down with my family, and and how blessed I am to be able to do that. So I just I just wanted to share that with all of you, and I hope that my message speaks volumes. I, I'm a firm believer in peace. I don't like all these people arguing over politics, and I see both sides of the story. I really do see both sides of the spectrum. Some people want to go back to work. Some people are like, no, no, no. You know, it's going to murder any. It's going to murder people, which it will. It will. If you give it to somebody and they die, you know, you're murdering them when you have the ability to wear PPG proper protective gear, and so you're being careless. Is what I'm saying. Um, so the government needs to find it and implement a way to reopen the economy safely, safely, but they need to put out more tests. Mistakes were made. Mistakes were made in China. Mistakes were made with who, possibly? Mistakes were made with Donald Trump. There are mistakes across the whole board because nobody was ready for the pan a pandemic. And the truth is, it may not be an asteroid that wipes us out, an alien invasion, a zombie apocalypse. It could be a pandemic, especially when the polar ice caps melt, there is bacteria that killed some of the dinosaurs, wiped entire legions of dinosaurs out. If those ever get out onto this planet, the human race is going to pet, is going to die, and nature is going to claim this planet once again. And I'm just stating the facts. But you know what? My grandma used to say to me, eat, eat little Ricky. It could be your last meal. So I'm going to tell you right now, eat, eat, sit down, have a nice meal, be blessed for the things you got, be blessed for family, love your friends, love thy neighbor, and stay safe. This is the Lord Rick of Angel on that radio, and we're live in Carson City. We'll be back with more of the Jack the Ripper, London Morale. So everyone, the, this roast has been cooking now about seven hours. I'm going to go for at least eight, another hour. We have a California medley that I'm going to be putting in, and I'll show you guys everything. And it'll be a short little segment, but I want to show you how things, how the meat looks after seven hours. Obviously, it's not pink like it was or light brown. It's absorbed the black garlic and all the seasonings. You guys can see, I'm going to show you, look at that. It's, it's falling apart. Okay, there's no use even trying to flip it because look, it's just breaking apart, and that's because it's tender. Okay, so I'm gonna sh I'm gonna show you why I call it Jack the Ripper London Broils. You're gonna find out in a few minutes. But doesn't it look good? You have to understand it's a black garlic type of sauce I made. So it has a lot of darker seasonings and marinades, you know, that kind of thing. So the meat is going to take on, take it all on. And it's absorbed it because it's not as high. I mean, when we started, the meat was submerged. Now it's starting to show a little. And I, I'm going to show you how to completely absorb the rest of the juices in a few minutes. I'm going to show you guys because we want to absorb more juices internally. And some of it's dissipated. But we have enough to go ahead and put a medley in in a few minutes. And the medley will absorb some of the garlic taste and herbs. It's just going to be such a yummy meal on the plate. I, you can't go wrong with this. It's totally healthy. Um, I usually take in 1,900 calories based on my weight a day. I can take up to 1,900 anymore. I'll gain weight. If you stay under that amount, let's say you do only 1,000 out of 1,900 calories, you will lose weight every couple days. And so I stay under my calorie count, but I also eat healthy. And so if even if this were to put you at your calorie count, let's say 600, this is about a 600 calorie meal, maybe less, it's a good meal. And it's protein and vegetables, not sugars and, 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 and unhealthy types of foods. I'm back with our stay at home cooking episodes, Lord Brick of Angel and Night Radio. I showed you guys the, the meat. You see it's absorbed the black garlic marinade that I made. 
I mean, this is a really wholesome meal. This meat's falling apart, but I'm going to show you why, why we call it Jack the Ripper London Broil. There's a reason for it, okay? And like I say, you have the sound effects, you know, like, uh, 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 you know what I'm saying? But you take your knife like this, and you look at your family in an evil way, and you start going, uh, 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 and they have a big shitty and grin, and see what kind of see what kind of look they get, just for entertainment purposes only. You got your friends coming over for dinner. You got a date. You hold all you do is hold the chef knife and start going. <laughs> just see what kind of look they give you. Oh, well, Tammy's not gonna like that. I just splashed it everywhere. Sorry, folks. Anyhow, I stabbed the fuck like Jack the Ripper. You're gonna shred this meat, this London broil, like you're Jack the fucking Ripper. You gotta shred it good, it's gotta absorb the rest of the juices, okay? We still have a lot of extra juices, the meat is just barely above. And, you know, I was telling you guys, okay, I gotta submerge the meat, because we wanted the whole meat to get flavor, right? So, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna shred it into smaller pieces. And it should be tender enough to do this. What I usually do is I take a fork, You know, Jack the Ripper, they say he was a doctor, he was a surgeon. And back in the day, when I lived up in New York, there's the Francis, I think it's Francis Tumulte. It's a grave site, in a graveyard about 400,000 people are buried. There are crypts, angel statues. Mount Hope has a half a million people, so you have two big cemeteries side by side, and Tumulte's buried pretty close to the road. It's kind of a pink marble stone, but... He traveled back and forth between England at the time the Jack the Ripper murders were going on. And some people believe he lived in Rochester. He used to come to Rochester, stay with family. I believe his mother, maybe his grandmother. Nobody suspected him, but based on all the clues, Jack the Ripper is probably buried up in Rochester, New York. Um, his name comes up a lot. And, you know, I think he was a doctor or a surgeon. The women that were killed, I mean, yeah, they were butchered. But it was surgical. I believe Jack the Ripper did surgical procedures on his victims. Okay, so just like surgery, you're going to pretend. You're going to pretend now. This is this slab of meat that you're going to pretend like you're butchering it. All right, because you have to butcher it. Because I'm telling you right now, you when you start shredding up, sh shredding and, and fucking up this London broil like your Jack the Ripper, and you get enough slices and chunks of meat. Now what you're doing is dispersing it so that anything that did not suck up the marinade or the seasonings will have a chance now. When I say suck up, I'm saying London broil, it's, it's a very thick, tough, not a tough piece of meat, but it's a very hard meat to flavor and marinate. If after, this has been now cooking for about six hours, seven hours, nothing wrong with that. You can slow cook a meal eight, ten hours, the longer you soak it, the better. Don't over you don't want to overcook it so it's mush. But this is still a very tender piece. I mean when you're mass you're massacring the meat basically and that's what I'm doing, you know, like <coughs> like Jason Boris, man. You know what I'm saying? Except I'm Jack the Ripper and you're gonna shred and massacre the fuck out of this meat. You want chunks of beef. And that's what I have here is chunks of beef. It no longer looks like a slab of meat that we put in. And so what we're going to do, we, we're gonna, we've got about an hour till we eat, okay? And I'm going to show you guys what it looks like shredded. Because when you put it on a plate with the vet, with the medley, when you put this on a plate, you're going to have chunks of lemon broil that are going to be so tender it's going to melt in your mouth. As opposed to if you broil lemon broil and you put it in the oven, you put tin foil, you wrap it all up, and you slice it. If you don't slice it thin, it's a little bit tough and it's a little dry and it lacks flavor in the middle. Not one piece of London broil in here is going to lack flavor because I have massacred the fuck out of it. And so being that it's absorbed most of the marinade, it's a Korean marinade that I made, but being that the Korean mar black garlic marinade has been, you know, having a chance, the meat's had a chance to absorb it slow cooking for six, seven hours, now that it's break, the meat's breaking apart, we know it's done. But if you want it more tender and flavorful, you put it on for another hour. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it back. I'm going to put it on high for about an hour. And the reason why I'm going to do this 
is we have our medley right here. Um, they are frozen vegetables. Obviously, they're going to thaw out in, the, in here, and they're going to take some time to cook. A good, I'd say an hour in the crock pot because they're going to absorb most of the juices. And um, the meat, now that the meat is totally sliced and diced, anything that hasn't absorbed what's left of the marinade will do so now. And I will show you guys this. Uh, this is for adult audiences only, so I will show you guys. Do not try this at home. And, uh, you know, it's okay to play doctor with your food. It's okay. I'm not massacring people. You know what I'm saying? I'm massacring the London broil so I can eat fine tonight. Fine dining. This is a meal that you could sell. If you were at a restaurant, you could sell this meal for $20. I'm telling you. I'm going to also make some applewood smoked bacon mashed potatoes to go with the meat. And we're going to have a nice medley. This is a totally healthy meal. The only thing that has carbs, obviously, is the mashed potatoes. You're all out of little carbs a day. But back years ago, I would have two, three side dishes, all carbs. Rice, mashed potatoes, bread, three sets of carbs, three servings apiece. And I gained a lot of weight, and I was foolish. And I hate myself for that because I almost had diabetes. I was pre-diabetic by a few points. And now I'm no longer pre-diabetic. And the reason why is I figured it out. I wasn't having two, three carbs a day. One carb's okay. I'm trying to give you guys healthy food advice because healthy eating during the quarantine is important. You're sitting home. You don't want to gain weight. You're not working, but you're sitting home maybe playing PlayStation. You don't want to sit and gain weight. If you don't want to gain weight, you stay under your calorie count, but you also eat a meal like this. You know, a lot of vegetables and proteins and things like that. Maybe go in your garage, weight lift, or go for a jog, walk your dog. Because this is a meal you're going to want to exercise with. It's, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's got protein, it's got vegetables. After you eat, you're going to feel like wanting to go mountain biking, jogging, whatever. But I'm going to show you guys my final masterpiece here. You're going to see my final masterpiece. Um, it is Jack the Ripper London Broils, so obviously you're going to... You know, you're going you're gonna to slice it, dice it, shred it, massacre it, whatever word you want to use. But you want to get in there and you want to separate the meat because you want the meat to finish absorbing the juices. Okay, this is, most London broil you cook in the oven, you can slice a London broil, if you cut it thin, it's still kind of chewy, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's not tough, but it's not tender enough. By putting it in the crock pot, this is so tender, every piece you put in your mouth is going to melt. And you could eat this, you could bring an elderly person with no teeth, and they could eat this. That's how tender it'll be. And, and the reason why I say that is because you've got to take care of your, your elders, your grandparents. They can't go to the store, and they can't buy food. They can't do things. They're elderly. They could get the coronavirus. Elizabeth Warren's brother of 86 years old had died from the coronavirus. And, um, you know, people are getting it just going to the grocery store, and they're dying because... The pneumonia gets into your lungs, and if you're elderly, your lungs aren't as strong as a young person. You know, we have pollution in the air, and, and there's asthma, and there's COPD, and all these things. So once you get the virus, it's a death sentence. It's the angel of death. So, you know, you got your elders at home. They're not able to leave, but you don't want to give your elders junk food. A lot of them are diabetic. So what you want to give them is a nice London broil, slow-cooked, soft. They're able to eat it tender, along with this vegetable medley, which I'll show you guys up close, okay? So I put it in the bowl, and we're going to transfer it in the hair, and we're going to leave things alone for about an hour. Let me show you, okay? So you guys can see the final masterpiece. If you can't handle it, look the other way. It looks like, it does look like a bunch of guts. It does. It looks like just a pot full of guts, you know, <laughs> or some witch's brew. But it's really, I mean, the, the meat is really good, and, and, and I'm telling you right now, this is going to be a great dish. Now you can see, if you look very carefully with this, okay, these are small pieces of meat. It's not really shredded because it needs about another hour and, a le and these pieces will even break up smaller. But if you look, you know, just little pieces on the spoon. There's some shredded meat, shredded London broil. So I really massacred the hell out of it. But it's not done. We still have some final touches till this dish is done. And what really makes it, I'm going to tell you right now, it's not just the meat. It's the vegetables that you use. And a lot of time people are like, I don't like to eat vegetables. They don't have, a lot of people don't flavor them. If you cook this in the, I don't want to make it, have the vegetables be mush. So I'm going to take the vegetables, I'm going to cook them for an hour so they're tender. They're not mush, okay? And that's why we're doing this now. But you just pour them in, okay? I got a, it's a bowl full of frozen vegetables. What it is, is 
broccoli, cauliflower, and of course carrots. And you want to stir it in with the meat, okay, because these vegetables are going to take on the flavor of the marinade. Now, if you notice with the crock pot, look very carefully. What do you see? Everything's being absorbed. The vegetables and the meat are absorbing all the leftover sauce and marinade. It's a North Korean marinade, obviously, black garlic, cabal, or kabul, should I say. And um, you guys seen that the, you know, the meat was submerged, right? Well, look, everything, it, it, there is hardly any marinade left. I'm not saying it's dry. It's actually very moist, and the meat's very tender. But it, the meat and the vegetables have absorbed all the sauce and black garlic marinade and all the herbs now so what we'll do is we'll let the vegetables cook for an hour they're going to be very flavorful because this has been cooking all day with the meat the lemon broil in there and the herbs so and of course the black garlic so the vegetables will take on the same taste as a marinade in the meat and it'll be very good we'll have a nice out what we'll do is we'll put it on a plate just like this if you guys look We'll put it on the plate with the vegetables and the meat because it's a Korean. Keep in mind, this is a Korean a Korean dish that I made, a Korean London broil. And you don't have to add broccoli, carrots. Well, you can add a stir fry. You could add pea pods. You could add cut up potatoes, throw them on in, a couple potatoes. I don't really care. Like I say, you can tweak the recipe, but I'm showing you how to make the London broil in the crock pot because it's much tender, much more flavorful. So we're going to let that fester. This is going to have to sit, okay? It's not going to get dry. You can see it's still very moist, but everything's been absorbed now that they've been stirring it. We'll put the lid back on. We'll put the timer on for about an hour. And we'll eat. We'll be eating in about an hour or so. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to... I will come back. Let's get the timer on. Okay, there we go. You guys see, one hour, okay? In about 45 minutes, 50 minutes, I will start cooking the mashed potatoes. And then we will eat. And I will show you the final results on a plate. You guys are just going to be amazed how, how delicious it looks, full of vegetables, good flavor, tender meat, just chunks of meat, kind of like a beef stew, you know, sort of like that, but with lemon broil. And, it, and it's very thick like gravy. This is not a watery dish. So when we put it on the plate, it will have absorbed everything, okay? So one more last look, guys. I'll be back with the final segment of the show soon. This is Lord Rick, live from Carson City with Good Eats on Angel the Night Radio. The timer's up. I'm going to put the crock pot back on low, okay? And the reason why I'm going to keep it on low is we're about to serve this Jack the Ripper linen broil. It is done. It has absorbed the juices, but I want to put it on low or at least put it on warm while I'm eating in case you know in case you want to serve seconds to your guest or your family or whatever you do want to keep it warm but I'm gonna tell you right now if you leave it in the crock pot overnight in the fridge and then eat it warm it up tomorrow it'll even taste better like I say the longer it has to marinate within the juices and cook or even just sit in the juices the better the meat's gonna taste now here's what we got okay it looks like a beef stew Look at the meat. It's just falling apart. Look at that. And I mean, it smells so good. And the vegetables are not mushy. You know, sometimes you cook stew or, or a, lemon, you know, um, a roast and the vegetables are all mush. But look, we got whole carrots. And the meat's just falling apart. These are just chunks of meat. I mean, I don't even have to hardly press. Everything just, you know, I just put the spoon over and it starts to fall apart, you know. Look at that. So... I'm going to continue to stir it. It's on warm. And see, it's a slotted spoon, so, because you don't want to put, I mean, there, it's like a gravy, but we're serving it on a plate, not a bowl. So it's a slotted spoon, and we'll serve it like this on the side. Now, you can decide what kind of side dish you're going to do. This is an applewood bacon cheddar mashed potatoes. It comes pre-made, but I doctor it up with milk, uh, butter, seasonings, you know, that kind of thing. And so we're going to let that sit for a couple seconds while I continue on with the show. This is on, obviously, low right now because it is done. It, I mean, when the meat falls apart, 
you know it's done. And like I say, you can even go like this. I mean, you know, it's called Jack the Ripper London Broil for a reason. Because you need a chef's knife. Not really. <laughs> it just gives it that effect, you know. You're like, I'm making Jack the Ripper London Broil. And then you pull out the chef knife and chef's knife, everybody's like, what the fuck you doing? Well, you know... Sometimes you got to stab the meat a little for flavoring. Uh, you got to massacre the meat. And it's so massacred. I mean, each piece is only about... The biggest piece in here is about an inch big. You know what I mean? It's, it's a beef stew mixed in with cauliflower, carrots, and broccoli. And it's all seasoned equally. Along with now your side dish. You could decide what side dish you're making. I wanted to make some mashed potatoes. You can make a rice. You could put applesauce on the side. You could just make a roll with butter on it. The side doesn't matter. The main course, the main dish, is a Jack the Ripper London broil. Most London broils are that you get at a restaurant or, or that you order or that you cook or that you broil. It's just a big block of meat, and it's kind of chewy like horse leather because really, I believe in my heart, London broil is made for the crock pot. As you guys can see, it's like chunky beef stew. You got chunks of beef and, and vegetables it's just it's perfect and it, and the taste is throughout so I'm about to make the plates and I always show you guys when I make the plates and that's usually what I use as a thumbnail for my videos you know we're in the we're in the COVID-19 virus outbreak a lot of people are home I believe in healthy living healthy lifestyles and over the years I didn't believe in that because I thought I'd stay young forever have a fast metabolism and now I realize you know I could gain 50 60 pounds become diabetic and the coronavirus could have killed me could have killed me but to be around 190 pounds able to you know I have a lot of physical ailments but to play basketball with a group of young guys and compete and to do all those things is just amazing and so when I say healthy lifestyle I mean eating right getting exercise no drama but you know positive things in your life um, you know I spent I spent half of my life in the mountains hiking camp and fishing off-roading even just driving around with the fresh air and just checking out nature locally whatever but I spend a lot of my time outdoors that's my second home that's where I'm I can sit down Indian style in the middle of some canyon nobody's been in 50 years and and have a pizza a piece of pizza smoke a joint and be happy. I'm a simple guy. But I live a very active, healthy lifestyle. I, ex I mountain bike, I play basketball, I eat right. Always good dinners most of the time. Sometimes I cheat, have a burger, you know, a burger. But I believe in healthy lifestyle. I believe in getting fresh mountain air, hiking, smoking the best weed, the best pot. And that's, that's a lifestyle I'll continue to do for the rest of my life. I've been smoking bud for over 20 years but I like to smoke the best of the best so when I get bud I mean it's high medical grade type of bud it isn't something that you get on the streets I mean it's made to help your physical ailments like your knee or your back you know and at the same time give you a little, calm your anxiety down and I have PTSD and anxiety and such so I smoke to contain that and it works most of the time not all the time I mean, I'm pretty strong-minded and stubborn, right? So, I'm pretty set in my ways, too, when it comes to cooking with garlic. Everything has garlic, you know. But we're going to season this lightly. I don't do a lot with the mashed potatoes. Sometimes I'll put cheese and such in it. But a little bit of... Oh, looks like we're out of sea salt, man. I may have to get sea salt tomorrow. That's okay. We have other options. Maybe. Here we go, iodized salt. i tell you something, you got a goiter. If you don't have enough iodine, you're going to have some problems. Always, you, it's okay to use sea salt, but don't use sea salt every single time you cook. Um, use some iodized salt. So I'm going to put some iodized salt in the mashed potatoes. Now, I don't want to put a lot. I'm just going to put a few sprinkles, okay? I always put a little salt and pepper with the mashed potatoes. Sometimes it depends on the type of mashed potatoes I'll season them, but I'm not really, I'm only putting salt and pepper today because this is an apple with bacon, so it already ha has a lot of good taste to it. You know, a little bit of milk, a little bit of butter. I have it on low. I always slow cook the mashed potatoes. 
I thought about maybe making a rice or some other dish. I thought about it. But I figured nothing goes better with London broil than mashed potatoes and vegetables. This is kind of, I mean, you could te technically say I just made a stew, a London broil stew, which is fine. You know, it, it looks like beef stew, and it's going to taste a lot like beef stew because this is more of a great a garlic gravy that I made. It's really good. I mean, you, I mean, I wish you guys were were here and able to taste it, but you can make this yourself at home, and it doesn't require a whole lot of ingredients or cost. Um, I'm warming up the mashed potatoes just a little bit more because I wanted to add a little more milk and butter. Not too much, just a little. And I don't measure out cups or anything like that. You know, I just put a little bit in, I stir it on in. If it needs a little more, it needs a little bit of more. But we're going to be eating in about two minutes. I always like to show you guys the final results in the masterpiece. When you spend all day tinkering with your food, you better hope for good results. This has been an all-day project, just like our Leviathan pork links. But this Jack the Ripper London Broil, that's, you got, I showed you guys why we call it Jack the Ripper London Broil earlier. No, let me just say this, no hack and slash in the London Broil will ever be the same. It's different every time, guys, especially when you grab the chef knife. It's different every time. And you guys seen it. You know, you start off poking holes, then you start off chopping it up and mangling it. Again, you're down, you're constantly downsizing the meat because it's kind of shredded. You guys can see, I mean, yeah, there's some small chunks, but most of it's like shredded beef. You could technically take this. I'll tell you another little thing you can do. You can take a Kaiser roll, cut it in half, maybe put some butter on the roll. You, I would say toast it. Put a little lightly. Don't toast it. Don't over toast the Kaiser roll, but cut it in half, put it in the toaster, put a little bit of butter on it, and then you can take the shredded, it's shredded London broil with vegetables, and you can just pour it on top of the Kaiser roll. And, and I mean, it, it would be awesome. The reason why I'm not putting it on bread or rolls, I don't need the extra carbs. Again, when you make a meal, you got to think, what can I cut out tonight that's unhealthy? Do I need two carbs, one carb? Do I, how about a meal with no carbs? Some nights I have meals with no carbs. And I do it on purpose because that's how I cut corners and I lose a couple pounds during the week because I may go out and have a burger at Jack in the Box and then go to Wendy's a couple days later and have some other meal. And I may gain a couple pounds, but if I take in between those days, if I eat meals without carbs, my weight does remain steady or I lose a little bit because you're allowed to cheat. With my diet, you're allowed to cheat. And you notice I say my diet because I have a, a certain way of doing things to lose weight. And it does work. You could take diet pills. You could exercise and sweat your ass off. There's a million things you could do. Just You could eat salads and starve yourself. A million ways you can diet. But this is how I diet. You know, I'm allowed to have a burger here and there. But at the same time, meats, vegetables, things with high protein, some nights no carbs. And that seems to work well. So we're going to serve dinner right now. Potatoes are nice and creamy, but they're not mushy, they're not watery, and I'll show you guys the final results on the plate. And so, you know, like I say, you can toast some rolls, some buns, whatever you want to do, and you can get creative with this. A couple months ago I made this, and I thought, man, I should have put it on film for you guys, and I didn't film it. I didn't have a cooking show about the London broil, so I gave you guys the Leviathan pork loins, and the Jack the Ripper London broil is a, is a double creature feature. Who's the creature? I don't know. Am I a creature? <laughs> Some people say I am. But anyways, let's serve this food up. I didn't have to use You notice this is a herb and garlic type of marinades. Didn't have to use it. Because it, the meat shrinks, for one. And when it shrunk, it did end up absorbing some of the marinade, but it did stay under and cook throughout. And so once I chopped it up, and massacred it and added the vegetables, now we got a nice little gravy. Because even the vegetables will absorb a little bit, but they're not mushy. They're perfect. And I always try my food. And I got a fork here, so I'm gonna... I had to get a new fork. The paper towel stuck to it when I pulled it off, dude. There was like paper across the fork. Yeah, I wanna eat paper. You know how many times I've eaten things I shouldn't have eaten? 
and I'm still here, I'm still alive. That's why now I'm eating healthy, because I want to make sure, you know, everything goes in and out all right. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Try not to eat the paper towels, especially since this is like the apocalypse, it's like the COVID-19, everybody's hiding. There's no paper towels or toilet paper. It's like, you don't want to waste that piece of toilet paper. You have to use the toilet paper to wipe, to wipe your mouth and your ass at the same fucking time now. Because if you use all toilet paper, you are not going to find it at the store, my friends. People think that they'd rather buy toilet paper or paper towels. Like, I got no money for food. I was watching the news. Yeah, but you probably got a closet full of toilet paper. Feed your family first. If you cannot wipe your ass, here in the Sierras there's a plant that grows in moist areas. Perfect for wiping your ass. I always wipe my ass in the Sierras with these leaves. They just feel so good on the ass. I don't need toilet paper, all right? I'm a nature man. You want to catch a squatch, you be the squatch. You want to find the squatch, bring this in a container, go camping. Open it up at camp. Warm it up. We can warm it up on a little pot, like this stew, at the campfire. Bring it in a container. You cook this stew, you'll draw the big old boy in. You may draw in some bears, too, just, just, just to forewarn you. But anyhow, let's try this. Let's see how this meat is. I usually just get a small piece because I don't want to make sure it's done and tender. Because if it wasn't, I'd have to put it on that and slow cook for another hour. But based on the fact that it's breaking up, it's wonderful. Southern broils can be a tougher meat if it's not cooked right. But if you cook, slow cook it, it's so tender. It's, an, it's like eating an entirely different slab of meat or a different meat because of how it's cooked. The methodology is much different in a crock pot because you're slow cooking it all day and it's tenderizing in the juices. When you broil it, you're cooking it for 10, 15 minutes, depending on if you want it medium well, if it's well done, sometimes a half hour on broil, um, to get it to where it's uh, medium well, or at least well done. And, and that can be tough and have less flavor. So even when you marinate it, I've tried. So when I started cooking these in the crock pot, it comes out like a stew, and it's really good. So I let it cool down, I'm gonna taste it. as a final taste test. Oh my God, it's sweet and spicy. The gravy's so good. I didn't even really have to chew it. It melted in my mouth and I swallowed the piece. This is unbelievable. You can take this to a nursing home and all the people without teeth could for once in their life have steak, have London broil. Because you, if you eat London broil, let's say you have dentures or you're in an elderly home and they're like, we're serving on the London broil. None of those people can eat it. The only way they're going to eat it is with this method. This is the most tender linen broil you will eat. And if you make it how I told you guys, you will never put tin foil or put a linen broil in the broiler. You will physically make it this way every time because it tastes so much better. It's so much more flavorful and tender. So why wouldn't you do it this way? But this is a Kabul or Kabal Korean black garlic type of gravy. I made the gravy out of multiple different things, you guys seen. I mean, besides the seasoning and the garlic, we had the marinades in there. And you thicken it up, you stir it, let the meat and vegetables absorb it. So it is a Korean gravy. It's very thick. It's not watery or soupy. But I'm going to use a slotted spoon because we want to put the meat in just the vegetables. I'm going to use some of the gravy. I have this spoon I'm going to show you. Some of the gravy I'm going to put on my mashed potatoes because I like gravy, it's, so it's going to be really awesome. Let me show you guys, because let me show you how it's done, okay, How? because we're going to show you the final results. You're listening to Angel on Night Radio, we are live here in Carson City. This is your host, Lord Rick, giving you some good eats during the stay-at-home quarantine of the COVID-19. So what do you do when you're home? People ask me all the time, what do I do, Rick, I'm bored, I can't go nowhere. Cook, cook. Become a wizard in the kitchen. Eat. Just don't get fat, but eat. You can eat this all day long, you're not going to get fat. It's vegetables and meat. But you should exercise with a meal like this, because it's a, it's a really, I mean, there's a lot of protein. So you can build some muscle, you, you know, you can go out in your garage, work out at home. I have weights. I lift weights here and there at home. I'll turn on the news, lift my weights, you know, i got to keep my arms strong. My legs are super strong, like a mountain goat, go straight up the mountain. More like Sasquatch. You have to be a Sasquatch to find a Sasquatch. I told you guys this many times. And when you watch these paranormal shows, Chasing Squatch, 
Those guys are not being Sasquatch, okay? They're off near the road in some state park, like 100 feet. It's not real, you know what I'm saying? And they're never going to find this creature. I will come close to finding it before anyone else does. I will step, I've stepped in areas of the Sierras where I found hermit camps and creepy things. I just leave it at that. I found some creepy shit up in the woods. I've had things thrown at me. I've been chased, the whole ground shaken. I've had things swinging from the trees. I've seen Bigfoot. But I've also go to places where no man's been for a thousand years. Because I'll just go through brush for a couple miles and go up a canyon and up over a, in the mountains where there's no name peak. And I'll find all sorts of cool stuff. So this is our last ghost town trip coming up. Rattlesnakes start coming out. It's too hot in the desert. It's not comfortable to hike, camp, deal with scorpions, tarantulas, and of course other, like I say, rattlesnakes. I don't want my dogs to get bit. So we're going to be going up in the Sierras where it's in the, in the summer, it's 70s, low 80s. A lot of snow on the peaks. We'll see snow probably into July on some peaks. Um, some parts of the woods may have snow into June. That probably Because, I mean, there was some storms that brought three, four feet at a time. We had one a few weeks ago. It brought a couple feet. There's going to be a lot of creeks running. Tammy and I are going to hit the Sears, going to start doing our Bigfoot portion. You know, Bigfoot's a seasonal thing. We mainly do it in the summer and the fall. Sometimes the winter, but it's, there's avalanche. It's kind of dangerous, so I stay out of the Sears for safety reasons. But we're going to start backpacking in, setting up camp at remote lakes, areas where there's been some Bigfoot stories, some, um, up in the Crystal Mountains, a real creepy ancient area that Native Americans... Um, knew about Sasquatch up in those mountains and we're gonna backpack to some lakes up in there up in there we'll talk about it more in my next show um, but we're gonna be doing a lot of pack and pack out type of trips going out in remote to remote lakes setting up camp we've had some great UFO sightings we've gotten some great Bigfoot evidence at almost every camp trip we've done in the Sierras because I always mark what my GPS locations I want to go looking for caves, hidden ponds, lakes, and then we look for tracks at those locations. So we're going to serve up dinner. I'm going to watch Cat's Crossing. It's a, probably a cheesy horror movie. I mean, I love horror movies. You get a little bit of titties, you get a, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, a little bit of everything in a horror movie. Although they don't make me scared, and I've been looking for a horror movie that really scares the shit out of me. But I'll watch it. I'll get a kick out of it. Like I said, I'll see some fucking titties tonight, maybe, if I'm lucky. And uh, enjoy this feast of a meal. And the, nice, the blessed thing about it is Tammy and I are safe. We're well. We don't have no coronavirus. We're not sick. Um, I understand you can be asymptomatic, but we're taking the precautions to make sure, you know, we're social distancing. We're taking every precaution. And, and the places that we go... We go where there's no man. So we got our last series of five, six ghost towns. That'll probably put us up to 18 or 19 for the year. And then we're going to start going up into the high Sears at 8, 9, 10,000 feet, doing some camping trips, maybe go up in Ebbets Pass, uh, camp along the Yuba River, camp along the Stanislaus River, go up into some of the peaks and primitive areas. Uh, we're going to have some good trips this year. But... We try to be diverse. We try to do a little bit of everything. We'd like to do Crater Lake, Mount Shasta. I got a bunch of other areas we got to check out and look for, and do some monster hunting. But Tammy and I are going to be in thick and uh, be taking the dogs. Winston's one years old, so he's going to get a lot of hiking. He's going to experience a lot of things. He's going to see a lot of things. There are wolves, wolverines, birds. There's just all sorts of things that he may smell or sense out there. Deer and and you know, there's wild horse. He still has a lot to experience, and he hasn't really had a pack-in, pack-out trip where we're going five, six miles to some lake with our backpacks, setting up camp, and then we explore a couple other lakes on foot, and then all the way back, you know, 12, 13 miles in one day, you know, in 24 hours. Well, you know what I'm saying. We're going to try to do a Star Lake, which is on the backside of Job's Peak. I always find monster tracks up there. I've had some really spooky experiences up by Job's Peak. Really spooky and up in the Tahoe area. So we're going to do some camping, going to do some fishing, going to do some hiking, going to do some exploring. But, I mean, we killed it. This last month, we've done almost 20 locations. I would say about 14 right now. We do five, six more ghost towns and mines coming up, and that'll complete 
a whole area of Mineral County, it'll complete because Mineral County in the center of Nevada, and uh, it's Mineral and Nye County, the Nye County and Mineral County area of Nevada sits almost in the center of the state. Basically the middle of bumfuck nowhere. And those are areas that, those are areas that are so remote, but there's so many ghost towns and old railroad beds. And it used to be a booming place. Smokestacks, mills, you know, the sound of the train chugging over the Gillis Range and these little side spurs that went to these mining camps that we're going to right now and so you know we may camp in Marble Canyon we may we'll end up doing Bruner the Kaiser mining camp Bruner there's also next to Bruner two or three other little mining camps plus up in the hill above is the Paymaster Mill it's just gigantic it's enormous you can go to the ghost town of Marble um, it's up in a beautiful canyon that has woods and high desert and probably overlooks the expanse. We can find a little area with the truck, park it, and set up a tent above up in the canyon. And uh, might go to Simon, Gold Dyke, Atkin. I have a whole bunch of other mining camps and places we can go. And we're not done with the northern Nye County, Mineral County area. There's still a few more dozen ghost towns we'll do next year and the year after. But right now, I mean, if we will stop at 18, 19, 20 places for the winter, early spring and we'll re now we'll start transitioning like the Washoe Indians. Snows melt and we'll go up in the high sears. So many places we can explore. So many Bigfoot hot spots that people don't know about. Lakes lakes that are hard to get to. We just pitch a tent on and I'll hear vocalizations and see strange lights and find tracks that make no sense that are like 18 inches. I mean it's exciting stuff what we do. But we don't do it for fame. We don't do it for fortune. What's my point? If you're going to go out there squatching, you better eat a squatch-like meal. And so let's serve dinner. I know I talk a lot, but you guys are my only connection to the outside world, being that this is a stay-at-home type of situation. I do stay at home most of the time right now, besides being heavily agoraphobic, but I do stay home a lot. So I don't have any interaction with many human beings. The only interaction I have is with my friends on Facebook, my audience and viewers for YouTube, my followers for the Paranormal Ghost Society, and you guys are asking for a cooking show, so I'm giving you guys a good cooking show. Um, but we're going to put, chunk, it's chunks of meat, there's lots of broccoli and vegetables, and I'm going to, I'm fixing the cameo plate first. It's a very simple meal. It's basically, if you want to put it down, you could basically say it's steak and potatoes. One broil is just a giant steak. This is steak, potatoes, and vegetables. It's a very healthy meal, and I'm going to show you guys, okay? So, dinner's almost served. It was, it was sliding. It was like, oh, snap. <laughs> but it's all right. Good thing I caught it before it hit the floor. That would have been a messy mop and mess, that's all I gotta say. But I, I, I saved it from slopping on the floor. I always make a mess. I've been wiping the kitchen down all day. Because remember when I went crazy and I showed you guys why it's called Jack the Ripper, London Broil? Yeah, I splashed, I had, I had, black garlic gravy on the ceilings, on the stove, on the floor. It was everywhere. I had to stand on a ladder and fucking clean it, man. Serious. I went crazy. I, I went, I just got crazy hacking and fucking slashing, man. But if you're going to call something a name, you got to stick to that name. And this is Jack the Ripper London Royal. So let me serve my plate. I like to goof around a lot. Sometimes I screw around too much. It gets me in trouble. I once was at an asylum and security was chasing me and I jumped in the bushes and they couldn't find me and they were shining the flashlight on the bushes and they still didn't see me. And then as soon as they turned their backs, I ran past them and I dove in a window and I ended up exploring this asylum up in Buffalo where, by the way, I found tunnels. You know how you have a basement under most asylums and miles of tunnels? Well, I found tunnels under the tunnels. I actually shouldered a wall and injured my shoulder. A stone wall because I seen a little light pattern through it. I kept bashing it with my feet and my shoulders. Put a hole, entered some secret tunnel system under Buffalo. And there was some like ghost man in the fucking tunnels. 
and he was all like in an old painter's uniform from the 1800s with the hat and little mustache and gray hair and he's loading these crates and he doesn't see me I'm standing like 30 feet in front of him and it's in this underground room below deep below Buffalo it's kind of spooky shit I don't think I was supposed to find the secret tunnels but anyhow here we go I got some carrots nice chunks of meat I'm gonna put on you know and there's there's a lot of broccoli a lot of cauliflower obviously it's not gonna be orange it's not gonna be white or green because the vegetables have absorbed everything, which is what we want. We want our vegetables to be flavorful. There's nothing wrong with throwing them in and making a stew. There's nothing wrong with throwing, the vegetables will flavor the meat a little bit too, while the meat actually, there's fat, a little fat on the edges that boils off and it'll flavor the vegetables. The whole point is, is that everything I make has to be full of flavor. I don't like plain Jane food. I like, I like everything to be just Mm, uh, bon appetit, mamma mia, you know what I'm saying? I just like good food. So, plates are served. It is dinner time. You're listening to Angel the Night Radio. This is Lord Rick. And I'm going to also change angle of our, our show so you guys can get the, look down at the plate and, and see the final result. It's just, it's a gorgeous meal. It really is a gorgeous meal. And, and you know, I just want to say real quick, I feel blessed to have family friends that are safe and healthy, a meal I can sit down with my family, have a meal like this. I mean, I know some people are struggling to eat and they're not working and their rent's not being paid. I, I understand both sides of the story. I really do. But don't take nothing for granted. Be happy that you have an opportunity to enjoy the outdoors. Yeah, you can't go to work, you can't go to a restaurant, but you can surely go out in your yard, play baseball with your little boy. Um, Take your daughter to the park, let her go down the slide. I know some parks are closed, but, but what I'm trying to say is that now's a good time to see what you have. And, and, and what I mean by that is you can't take things for granted. You could be here one day and gone the next, but don't take anything for granted. Be happy that you can sit down with your wife or your girlfriend and eat a nice meal and watch a good horror movie, which is what I'm doing tonight. Uh, be thankful that you have healthy kids. Be thankful that your pets are alive. You know, Winston's one years old. I raised him since a couple months. He's just a big, healthy puppy. I'm happy he's healthy, he's well, he's smart, he's a great dog, he's protective, he's going to hike with me. But be thankful for those simple things in life. And please be well, everybody. And remember, to social distance. Stay home. If you don't need to go out, just stay home. And, don't, and you don't have to stay home. You can go jog. You can walk your dog. You can go camping in the wilderness and hiking. Tammy and I... We'll go out for a couple days in the bush of Nevada. We'll go visit all these ghost towns. We'll never see a single human being. We'll never camp next to a human being. We are going in the wilderness, an area that has 20 mountain ranges and 50 peaks. Some rise in the 12,000 feet. High desert and woods. There's not going to be any human. There's a thousand miles of dirt roads where we're going. Okay, it's a, just a massive area and we're going to go over the Shoshone mountain range to a these mining camps. We may even camp in the mountain range. It's another part of the range that's part of the ghost town of Ione. It's north of Ione, so it's a, it's a different part of the range I've never been in. A lot of caves, very ancient area. It is where the Shoshone were born. Supposedly 10,000 years old. They just, they were, it's the place of birth. It, it's very ancient. There's rock paintings everywhere it's and there's possibly even bigfoot where we're going high up in those nevada mountains so wish us luck we're gonna have a healthy meal before we head out to these ghost towns this is lord rick your founder of the paranormal ghost society your host of angel that night radio we're live in carson city okay so make sure one more thing guys you check out our website www.paranormalghostsociety.org um this is a 420 friendly show i want to wish you guys we missed it by one day a happy 420 it's a little late but it doesn't matter. Better late than never, right? As long as you're token and smoking. <laughs> so let me show you the final results. I'm going to tilt the camera and then I'm going to say bye, everybody. It's, it's, a, it's almost 9 o'clock and I've been cooking this roast for... Let me see the time. 9.29? 10 hours. I've been cooking roast for 10 hours. <laughs> bon appetit, everybody. Doesn't that look good? Oh man, just chunks of beef and vegetables and a garlic type of gravy. I was going to show you guys one last trick before I go because I wanted to show you. Remember I showed you I, I made a gravy? Okay, well, there's a lot of beef shreddings. You have chunks of meat, 
which is fine, you know. But but if you go around the meat, you have look nothing but gravy. Watch. So what I did is I made a little hole right here. Okay. You guys, I don't know if you can see, but I take the spoon and I twist like this, and watch. Pour a little of the beef shreddings and a little bit of gravy in the hole. So what I have now is mashed. This is a garlic gravy with herbs. It's very good. I have applewood, bacon, and cheddar mashed potatoes, which, along with you know with this garlicky gravy. It's got a smoke type of taste. Really good. It's smoked applewood. Um, so the mashed potatoes really good. Then I got vegetables mixed in with chunks of beef, and then I'm, and then there's shreddings of beef that are real fine. Oh, those are so yummy. And because we shredded this, it's absorbed most of the gravy and all the flavor. So it's not like you're going to get a piece of meat that's dry and has no flavor, and you're like, bleh, or a piece of fat. All throughout is just exuberant taste, my friends. So here you go. This is the final meal. I'm going to head on out of here and watch Cap... Cop, I almost said Cox Cross. <laughs> it's Cap's Crossing on Amazon Prime. we got a whole list of horror movies. We're just going through them every day. Every night's like dinner in a horror movie. Because what can you do? You can't go to the movies and have a tall one. I mean, you're kind of stuck at home, so you got to be stuck at home. Eat a nice meal, stay healthy, be well, be kind to one another. Follow some of my recipes and good eats, and uh, you guys will not regret it. With that being said, everybody, look at me crouching because we I adjusted the camera so you could see the meal. It's awesome. Um, but I want to wish you guys peace, love, and obviously stay safe. I'll be back with more good eats soon. And another episode of Stand Up Comedy and Paranormal Angel of Thy Night Radio. And we're live at Curse City, everybody. Have a good night. Bon appetit. Oh, look. Look at that. My meat just fell onto the floor. All right, guys. <laughs> I'm making a mess. I'm out of here. Peace.